we should be live. I'm just going to put this um, the copy for the uh, live stream in the chat for the premiere that we've just watched, ladies and gentlemen, in case you weren't uh, automatically uh, streamed over. If you have streamed over, let me know. We've got Mike on the side as well. So I'll just unmute him because he was watching the premiere along with me. Um, unmute Mike. I'm trying. I can't unmute. Uh, oh, you've muted yourself, Mike. Oh, so I have. I didn't realise. Oh. Thank you. Oh, that's fine. That's fine. Uh, good. I'll shut that one down. Uh, hopefully everybody's made it across uh, from the premiere. Right, so what we're going to talk about tonight, and I've asked Mike to come along just to give me a bit of support in case I run out of words. So this was what we've just watched. Okay, uh, Z-shaped things, inverted L's, verticals and that sort of thing. And it got me thinking that people are bound to have some questions and I've already seen uh, some questions in the um, when, when we ran the premiere. You can just tell me you can hear me okay and I don't need my volume up or down or anything. If that's okay, that'd be fine. Uh, it didn't stream over, unfortunately. No, it didn't for me either. Um, and so me. I, must, I must have pressed the wrong button uh, when I was setting this up. I'll use a black pen. So the questions that I could see on the premiere were um, if you're doing a funny shaped dipole, is it important where the legs are going to go? And I don't think it is. Your volume is fine, says Anton. And something else on... Oh, somebody mentioned a loop as well. Uh, if you've got a particular question, shout it out on the live chat now and we can cover it as well. Right then, well, I have to introduce Mike here because uh, Mike, he's got a channel as well. Mike M0MSN, he's a good friend of mine. He lives about an hour and a bit away. He comes yeah, roughly. occasionally. Yeah, uh, some of you might have seen the fun and games we did when we made the 41, four, 41 ballon, 4 to 1 ballon that day, and that was a very pleasant day indeed. So, Mike, what I want to do is um, I think we should just make a list of the antennas that we could build if we had a tiny plot of land. Okay, so if I just make this list here, I want to have a look at a loop, but maybe a magnetic loop because you're into them. Yep, we can do magnetic we'll, loops. We'll look at fundamentally a dipole, but how we can make it squashed. We'll look at um, an inverted L, inverted L, and how we can squash that up as well. And there was another one I thought. We got the an end fed, haven't we? Yep. Um, and I've got an idea. You could, we could possibly, Mike, linear load an end fed as well. It might not be multi band, but we could get it on the one band, you know, for, for down low. Because somebody wanted to know if they had a plot of land 20 meters by 20 meters, which is around about 60 feet in old money, can they get 160 meters in there? So I think as a challenge, we should discuss that and see how we can get. Uh, 160 metres in there. Yeah, definitely get 80, but 160 should be a bit of fun, shouldn't it? Yeah, I think we should have a look at that, because uh, Tom, uh, Tom did something, and I'll try and remember what he did, actually. OK, so just in case I accidentally press the wrong button, I'm going to shut the browser window as a lady on there. On the internet doing something very special there um the, <coughs> when i closed that browser that she wasn't really that's was pulling your leg by <laughs> okay it was, i was it, searching then to see if i could find it, the same channel it was this monitor here right uh, it wasn't turning and going on was you? <laughs> all right so let's um reduce the size of a dipole mike okay okay so for a start off when we we can we can definitely go up to 90 degrees there can't we yep. on an inverted v right now i don't know my pythagoras off by heart right now but i don't i'm assuming that if we were after let's say 40 meters and if someone could do the maths for us if these on the, i'll just keep looking at the, the live chat if these are 10 meters long and that's a 90 degree angle how, how, how long is that? Because that would be interesting. 
an hour. How high is it? If assuming this was very close to the ground, say two meters off the ground, six feet. How high is that got to be? And I'm going to watch the live chat, Mike, right, and see all the clever maths guys are going to come out. But you can imagine. I mean, I'll just make a guess at this. This is going to be uh, about, what, 14, 13 metres end to end, I would have thought, something like yeah, that. Yeah, my head's telling me around 15, yeah. Um, right, but sometimes getting uh, getting that height, that height there, it is... It's going to be a bit of an ask, isn't it? So let's let's be let's be serious. I think five or six meters around and about. Um, I'm watching all these. Smokey from Scotland. He thinks it's. Um, well, I'm getting all the maths, but not the blooming answer. Six, Derek says Dan. That'll do. Um, fifteen meters. <laughs> but it's not. It's not. Is it? Can't be fifteen. No. It's got to be slightly less than that because I squeezed one in my garden. It's only thirteen meters wide. But let's just imagine then we we've got twenty-ish feet, about six meters height, because that can be done with all sorts banister rails and bits of fiberglass, nice and easy. Fourteen point one five says John Gendron. All right, there to there. Fourteen point one five. So that's actually seventy-five percent of um the dipole so that's interesting because we'll be able to transfer that somewhere else in a minute um right so um i think what we should do then is 20 feet this this way so to answer the quick question if you've got a tree you know in the backyard here and and you can get it up 10 meters then you'll be able to go 14 meters end to end whatever that is uh 40 ish feet uh 45 46 47 feet something like that however mike the challenge is <coughs> excuse me <coughs> let's have a six meter something six meter pole of something so about, about what's that in old money 20 footish three times six isn't it so yeah roughly yeah okay six say 19 meters right so we've got this pole in the backyard and we're gonna and it's only six meters high 20 ish feet and we've got to compact our dipole inverted v dot dipole and that's the first challenge uh okay well for me mike i don't know about you but there's only two ways i think we could do it we need to do a coil i was going to say you could load it or we could um back. yeah we could linear load it or coil it. So to, for those of you who've never made a coil before, this is a really fun experiment to do. Um, you get a little bit of plastic pipe and the diameter doesn't matter. You do a little hole there and a little hole here. Um, then take your wire and you come along, you go inside and then start making turns around and about it. Would you do the same way, Mike? Absolutely. Yep. You do that, and then you finally come in there, and then out the other way. Yeah, that gives you strain relief as well on the uh, on the it coil. Yeah. If you pull it too tight, the bloody thing will snap anyway. All right. Now everybody's going to ask how many of these, right? <laughs> now, do you know what the best fun, the best problem-solving fun I ever had is? I think I had an inch and a quarter or an inch and a half bit of tube, and I put sixty. So about 60 turns or an inch and a half came out the other end and that reduced my dipole on 40 meters from well it came down quite a lot <laughs> well i'm going to put a caveat in that if i may because it Go depends on. on where you put the coil ah you're right i put mine right in the middle okay yeah. fine so what mike's saying is if you put your coil very close to here there's more loading However, it's less efficiency. Is that yep. fair? Yeah, say, I, I go with that. Yeah. Okay. Yep. What I did is I took the best of kind of half both worlds, if you know what I mean, and I put my coil smack bang in the middle, there and there. And then all I did is I trimmed the end till it was bang on. It's, in fact, I was I was out to start with. Funnily enough, it was six point six six megahertz, which is the old forty five meter pirate band. That I think the Lancaster bombers and stuff used to be on. <laughs> I knew someone who got a visit <laughs> by a man in a uniform for transmitting on the 45 meter band. I, I think you weren't going to tell anybody. 
<laughs> it wasn't you, was it, Mike? No. <laughs> no, of course it wasn't. Uh, okay. Um, you will come down from 10 metre legs with about 20 or 30 turns on a two inch pipe. You'll probably come down from 10 metre legs to, I don't know, seven, eight metre legs, something like that. Will you, yep. you know, just a rough rule of thumb. And then literally just chop the ends until you bang on. Was that a fair way of doing it, Mike? Yeah, yeah absolutely. And um, one of the things to keep in mind is if you can't shorten it enough by putting the coil in the middle, if you move the coil more towards the feed point, you could sure. elongate the ends to actually fit. So you could, yeah, I mean, take a bit of playing around, but you could actually move the coils uh, closer or further away from the feed point um, to actually fit the garden or the fit the area that you've got. Yeah. So there's there's many ways we can play with that. So it's more loading by putting it towards the middle, less loading to put it, put it towards the outside. Yeah. Okay. Um. Chris Wilson says the 45 meter band is still in use occasionally. I know. I listened to some French people playing some writing track, some quite interesting pop music a while ago. <laughs> uh, it was <laughs> monotonous and it went on and on. I don't know if he blew his finals up at the end or whatever. Um, so give that a go. Now, while we're on this, um, Mike, uh, mm -hmm. shapes. Have you done have, have you ever done a funny shape where if you're looking at the top now? Uh, you come along like this maybe you've done something like that well yeah um very similar i've actually managed to put the hot end if you like of my my dipo um f as flat or as straight as i possibly could and then the side that's been connected to the shield has done quite a nice little wiggle around an s um so i could fit the rest uh -huh. of the balance in so um, okay so what you're saying is that one one end was relatively kind of normal yeah and then you had, so if there's your coax you had the sh the center going to there yeah and the braid magically went wherever yeah exactly just to balance off the antenna and i know okay. it, it obviously probably um made a mess of the the radiation pattern but uh, what i did manage to do obviously is get a relatively good um, um output from from the straight part of the element um mm. and it was just balanced so it's it's it still worked uh, relatively well yeah uh kg7vzy is that right higher impedance towards the feed point with the coil yes sir that's right yep precisely for the same coil okay yeah which bit of uh, trivia for you is one of the reasons we put the coil on the 80 meter vertical on the 12.4 i put it quite high up so i've got sort of non-loaded bit from the bottom up because our highest current on a dipole or a vertical is near the feed point. What I didn't want to do is throttle that too much. Is that kind of a nice English way of saying it, do you think, Mike? Yeah, I think so. Okay. You've basically got the coil up out of the way of all the elements. Yeah. Uh, Dave wants to know if we did on-site installs. <laughs> or installs, even. <laughs> installs, yeah. I know. <laughs> I mean, I don't know about you, Mike, but I mean, I'm, I've got a discount now. I, I'm only off like a thousand a day. <laughs> <laughs> Crikey, half my <Mike>, God. <laughs> That's right. So with That's Mike and I, it's about three grand. Going <laughs> <laughs> um, to make it worth our while. Yeah, that's right. Now, Mike, here's one for you. I don't know. Have you ever done linear loading? Yes. Ah. Tell me about quite, it. What was your experience? <laughs> okay. <laughs> there's a there's a, a great thing about linear loading that I don't know if most people realise is that you only actually use a third of what you fold back. I don't know if anyone realises that. That's a, that's a it's a great one. So if if you fold back the antenna, you know, where's my hand? There it is. So if you fold back the antenna onto the original uh, bit of wire that's going up. You're only ac actually using the top third of that fold back is the only active part or reactive part of the antenna. And the bottom two thirds of the fold back, um, almost as if it's not there. I mean, it is. Um, but then there's a reason for it. I don't know if you know what the reason is. but uh. and, and No, but I think you should tell us. And Jonathan wants okay. to join us as well. Oh, my goodness, Jonathan, Jonathan should have been in bed, and for some reason he's got up. <laughs> it's got another pass from his wife. That's what it is, isn't it? Yeah. 
Um, baby, baby's asleep. Okay. Ah, keep keep no. going, Mike, because yes, I've okay. got, I, I did I'll, an experiment and I I'll, had a different outcome to you. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. Um, well, if I got this 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 folded back, right, like so, and I've yeah. even put a little bit of tape on it just in case I was going to do this. Okay. Um, so that the folded back bit is a third of the length, if you like, of, of the rest of it. Yeah. Um, and the reason is, I think I might be wrong, but in my, mm -hmm. my layman's terms, as the RF comes up the uh, the wire, mm -hmm. uh, it's actually inducting um, the RF in this part. And as it comes up and around, it meets each other, if you like, okay. at this, uh, two thirds the way up. Uh, and it comes to like a, a pushback or a fallback position. So it's not going to go any further. Uh -huh. So I think that's the reason. I mean, it's very layman-y. Okay. Um, but I think that's the reason why it only uses that third and not the entire fold back. All right. So I need to say, so when Tom and I made his, well, we made a 80 meter, there's my coax. All right. This yep. was for 80. I cut a piece of wire and the whole thing was 12.5 meters long, but okay. it came back on itself. Okay. So let's uh, oh, both sides. So that's just like a dipole, one side, and it, it's it's not connected. So that's just free there, it's completely free, it just ends. But that's connected to the coax, and so is that. And it was too. That was too long. Okay, so I, I calculated on a rule of thumb of about three to one. I thought, oh, I don't know. I cut about a meter off. And we made a video about this, and it just turns out that I'd cut far too much off. So there was much more loading appeared to be happening here than I thought there was. Okay. So I cut off a meter, and I'd overshot by quite a long, long, long amount. So I had to add back on like about half a meter at this point here. Um, but anyway, okay. So that 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 is linear loading. And I, can I can I just say to you that as a rule of thumb. And Mike's experiment m may have been right as well, depending on different lengths, but I did the full length. So 20 meters, a 20 meter leg became 12 and a half, which is uh, 62 and a half percent. Okay. So definitely with linear loaded, you should be able to get a 62 and a half percent size. So if you've got two 10 meter legs for your 40 meter dipole, uh, we should be able to get down to 62, 6.25 meter legs, right? By linear loading it. And linear loading literally means you take a wire, you go up, you fold it all the way back down itself, but not pure copper wire touching. It's got to be insulated wire because you need a little gap between the two and experiment. That's what you yeah, need to do, is, just is, experiment. Just to be a um, bit of a stick in the mud, if you like, but isn't 62 point whatever it is, 5% close to two thirds? It is. It's, um, it's five eighths, actually. Yeah. So that fold back, if you like, is only using um, a third of it again, and then you've got the full length, if you're 19.5. Mm. Um, uh, well, you no, because it. as I started chopping this, it was making a difference all the way along that length. Okay. Well, it's a good experiment. I say go out and let's have another go at it. <laughs> I do as well. It's sort of insulated between the fold back portions. Yeah, I we I didn't use an insulator. I just used the two millimeter or whatever, eighth of an inch between the PVC plastic between the copper wire. It was insulated copper wire. I literally just folded it back on myself. You would find there's slightly more loading if there's more of a spacing. Would you say, Mike? Yeah. Absolutely. Um, okay. So if yeah. you had like one inch or 25 mil spacers, you'd get even more loading, not less. Yeah, I think so. I think that's the right way around. When are you guys going to sell Mike's radial deploying knife? <laughs> what's, the, what's, what's that? It's, it's what's, available at every good home uh, kitchen shop. <laughs> I saw one guy using a pizza cutter, by the way. Yeah. Uh, okay. Jonathan's on mute at the moment. Is that because I put him on mute or he put himself on mute? Self-inflicted, I think. 
Uh, it, it, it was it was self-inflicted. I'm I'm currently watching Rory as well on the monitor, and he's stirring like anything. Okay, that's fine. You, if, if I just run away, just, just run away. Don't worry. All right, so we've done we've done a coil, which you can make, and we've done linear loaded, and but I think it's really important to come back to shapes. To be frank with you, because I don't know. Rule of thumb, Mike and Jonathan, would you say? You take a straight dipole, the first, well, it's a sine wave, isn't it, thinking about it? Mm -hmm. Let me just draw this, and then you know what the hell I'm on about. So um, there's our dipole, and at any point, well, there we are. There's half a sine wave, if you like. So the current distribution is more of it is, you know, here than it is here. Yes? Therefore, it's a reasonable sort of common sense argument to say that if most of your current is coming off here, it doesn't kind of really matter on this shape whether you go along here, up a bit, along, and then over here, <laughs> right? I just say, if you can, I'd make the first 50% as sort of, imagine that being your antenna, and then the, net, the last... 50%, this bit here, you can do all your wiggly woggly around just to, for the tuning bit, just to get it so it's all harmonically izing. Harmonically izing. <laughs> it's a new, a new word. Just, it's Mike's new book, it's coming out soon. Right. <laughs> <laughs> harmonically izing. Where's Jonathan Brilliant. gone? There's Ray. John uh, is evaporated. Don't worry. He's got to Rory, his, his son. Sometimes he's, he's had a chest infection recently, so he's stirring a bit, apparently. Uh, so you get as creative as you want with shapes. Mike, can I just ask your opinion? If you're looking straight at somebody's dipole and they had done this, they'd gone, they'd done a little inverted V and then they'd come back a little bit like that. Do you think that's still going to work? Yes, yes, it will. Um, uh, it, obviously, it won't be as effective as if they've gone out at, uh, at right angles to that rather than mm. tucking it back underneath. Mm. Um, so if you look at it from above, it would have been better off, like you said, making a, a Z shape out of it, perhaps. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, it will work perfectly well, absolutely okay. perfectly well. You, <laughs> let's be honest about it. Uh, we've all made... Um, adjustments and had to turn our antennas around and 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 to get them to fit to the garden especially if you've got yeah. a smaller garden yeah. um and they still work they still get out like you say mm. the uh the the current is in from the feed point is the strongest bit the voltage is strong at the ends but uh so don't put it too close to uh, any metal fencing or down the ground or uh, uh, where yeah. anyone can touch it but um yeah it's uh interestingly on my 40 meter dipole i had a steel pole coming up the side and just to get more loading, I thought, oh, I know what I'm going to do. And I just strapped it to the, the steel pole, either less or more, to get a perfect tune. Right, right at the end, the last metre. You know. Brilliant. Honestly, I did. I should. Luckily for me, I took, I used to take photographs for the club magazine of all my little projects. And it's quite handy, actually, because I've got all the pictures. Uh, you can bend, here we are, there's a little rule of thumb here, Jim's saying, you can bend the last third of each side without too much loss. A quarter bend on the ends would be even better, more than a third bend causes greater loss. Says Jim Jungle, who's a friend of Tarzan's. <laughs> got to Just say hello there. to Tim, by the way, uh, G5TM, and uh, he bent his last third of both his legs. Now, I hope you're talking about an antenna, Tim. I was going to say, I didn't see a the A lot black. of feds. I want to see a picture of that. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So don't get hung up on the shape, all right? Spin it around, do whatever you want. So that's a dipole. Yeah, it's a case of getting it to fit, isn't it? Just get yeah. it to fit Just where get you it to like. Fit. Yeah. Get it to tune, and as long as you... I mean, it's going to be compromised like anything that's shortened... But get it to fit the garden, key up, yeah. and see if it works. And that's yeah. that's the uh, that's the thing. For our American friends, garden and yard are the same thing. We call it a back garden. You call it a backyard. So just sort of let you know. Um, just taking a glug. Not too much gin in that. 
Gin and milk. Uh, let's do all the variants on a on a vertical mic. Yep. Um, so a vertical, and we'll we'll just cover radials while we're at it, actually. But anyway, vertical. So you've got your coax here, the center of the conductor. That becomes your vertical, and the braid. If that's your ground here, you can put some radials on the ground, and there's a vertical. And all the same kind of theory we discussed on these pages are the same. You can linear load a vertical. You could put a coil in a vertical and you can make it a funny shape, which is one of the reasons why we can do an inverted L. Well, so, one of the we forgot to mention, actually, Callum, was um, in the diapo that whatever you do to one side, you have to do to the other. Um, yes, otherwise you so, get an off center fed dipole. Exactly. Thing. So mm. if you put a coil on on the hot part, you need to put a coil on the on the ground side, unless of course you've got room to to offset that. But uh, yeah, yeah. So, it, the whole point of dipoles are that they're balanced, so you do the yeah. same on both sides. So what Mike's saying is, this coil we've got here, put one there, and also put one there. Keep it balanced, ish. Yep. Uh, because that will help on the harmonicalization. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's another word. Hang on, let me just write that one down as well. Right. Um, I'll just cover Darren. If you wait, stand by, Darren. I'll cover that with you because Tom did something like this in a minute. Well, he didn't do it in a minute. He did it whenever it he took, did it. Took him much longer than the minute. Yeah, it did. It took him all afternoon, actually. So, all right. So, in other words, we can do the same. So, if you look at a mobile whip for a car, for instance, a motor vehicle, you'll often see, if this is the top of the car roof, you'll often see they put a little coil at the bottom here, don't they? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and you can do all sorts of stuff. So, and it's it's about shapes again. So, if, you, uh, if this is a 40-meter antenna, uh, we're after a quarter wave, a quarter wave vertical is exactly what it says. If this was for 40 meters in reality, if that was sort of half decent PVC coated wire, you will find that will end up being about 9.2 meters long, 9.3, maybe, maybe a bit more. Um, I can't do the calculations right now, but alternatively, just like we talked about the dipole shapes, Reconnect your drive. Your file history drive was disconnected too long ago. Go away. Um, you can do some, uh, I was about to say some kinky things. I think it might just possibly the wrong expression. But um, <laughs> when I'm on the line. <laughs> you, you can go up and along. So that could be five metres. And that yep. could be five metres. Yep. Alternatively, you don't have to be that accurate about this. That could be four and that could be six you know doesn't really matter and while mike is going to explain to you something very interesting i will quickly draw you uh -oh. um <laughs> in software what a inverted l looks like and i'll kind of do this as we because i haven't got one prepared 7.2 megahertz but i will actually do it and show you in a minute what the pattern looks like um, and I'll just kind of tap away occasionally when we get a minute and I'll show you the difference between a vertical and inverted L. There's not much because a lot of the current Too is true. coming off this bit here. So you're getting some good vertical. Oh, oh you, you need to do, that's it. <laughs> you need to press the button to get that's the right. right. A lot of your current is coming off the vertical bit, if you remember, because we discussed that here. It's coming up from there, so a lot of your, a lot of the sine waves coming off this bit, and a little bit is coming off there as well. And you see that an inverted L gives you quite good DX potential. In fact, on 80 meters, I've done across the Atlantic on low power actually on on SSB with an inverted L for 80, and I think that and was it, up. And it is indeed semi-directional as well. So. Um... The, the, the flat part of it is, is directional, where the vertical part is obviously omnidirectional. So you yeah. get a semi, um, a semi, a semi directional antenna. Uh, yes, <laughs> exactly, Mike. If I go up zero and along at the five meter point, I'm just gradually trying to draw this as we uh, chat away. Uh, and of course, 
you can do all the same things that we discussed with this. You could put a coil somewhere here. Yep. You can load it. You could load it. You could go, oh, well, I want actually this for 80 metres. I haven't got enough room, so I'm going to be get creative. I'm going to take a piece of wire. I'm going to go along and I'm going to strap it all together. I'm going to come back down there and stop there. There's my vertical with some radials. And that's about as best as I can do. And I'm going to put my analyzer on it and it's going to tell me what. I don't know. You might be on 3.6 megahertz. You might be on 4.2 megahertz. But only once you've worked it out, you go, oh, right, I can chop this out. Or I need to make it a bit bigger or whatever. So, but don't be put off just because of the space, because you'd be surprised. All right, so we've got a vertical and inverted L. And inverted L's are really pretty cool. If you allow me a few seconds, Mike, if you can tell them a story. <laughs> me, I can never tell anyone a story. It's funny, I can never actually ever find anything clever or sensible or <laughs> even good to say uh, okay. when we're live streaming. Um, oh, but there don't we worry are. about it. I have it's actually it. built... I've I built know. this now. For I know seven. I've been keeping everyone happy whilst you were looking in your library. Okay. Right, <laughs> so... My library of baloney geometry wire, wire one base. I will show you what I'm doing. So I'm on this little piece of software here, and if I do ooh, that, I think I get a wee bit bigger. Start. Ignore it. We've got SWR here of 4.17. Sorry, we're only in 720p because we can't afford the HD version of StreamYard. All right, but anyway, hopefully you'll be able to see that this it is a little bit directional. As Mike said, that L is pointing towards X, which is actually on the right-hand side. So, in fact, there's a tiny bit of gain opposite yeah, it's where middle. it's facing. But not that much. Five degrees off the horizon on a straight vertical we would normally expect to see about, or well, my setup, because I've got a standard ground plugged in here, of about minus five um db and here we're getting where well, it says it's even better mike so there's something well wrong but you'll find this there's not a lot there's not a lot in it inverted l's um work fine okay we still got that challenge a minute to do n fed now tim is an m fed guy only because he can't be asked to do put anything else out when he's out and about <laughs> 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 and Mike. <laughs> Shush. My, Mike wants the easy way out of everything. Mike, don't we all? Okay, so if you've only got an hour, you've got one hour, and the XYL says, oh, I'll go shopping, you go up to the park and play radio, um, and there's a tree there, we'll get your end fed out and chuck it out. Okay, I mean, it's nice and easy, isn't it? Let's face yeah. it. Okay. Um, so, what is an end fed? Mike, what is an end fed? Enfed half wave um, is basically a long wire with a transformer stuck on the end of it, mm. uh, which transforms a high impedance into something that's usable. Uh, quite simply put, um, and yeah. the enfed comes from the fact that the the antenna length is an end. Sorry, enfed. Enfed half wave comes from the fact that it's a, it's a half wavelength on any band, basically, yeah. uh, which is fed from the end. That's right. So, so what you're saying is if <clears throat> if we wanted to build one for 40 metres, a 40 metre dipole is going to be two 10 metre legs. Yep. An end fed is going to be the whole lot. Yep. And you only feed it from the end rather and than in the middle. Indeed. For fo a 40 metre end fed, Tim is going to tell us in the live chat <clears throat> what bands that's resonant on. But I think you'll find that is 40, 20, 15 and 10. Yep. Yeah. Okay, fine. And uh, Tim's also it's got relatively a... short. You're better off having a forty-nine to one than you are a sixty-four to one on that particular length. Okay, so because you did some experience about this, yeah. So for the lower bands, uh, if you're doing eighty and forty, eighty and forty, I'd do sixty-four, um, mainly because it's more forgiven. Uh -huh. and, and works, in my opinion, uh, is more stable, if that's the right way of putting it. I've had better results of a 64 to 1 on 40, 80, 160. Right. Uh, but you get a lot better results on uh, 40, 20, 10 or with a 49. Okay. That's, that's interesting. I wonder if uh, Tim's worked that one out. 
Uh, okay, so um, Nathan says ten. It tunes, but it's useless. Now we're going to have a debate because Tim's going to go. Well, it's not because I got Bermuda on it the other day. <laughs> uh, I think it depends on whether you put a decent of um, a compensation coil or across right. the uh, across the feed. Now, bearing in mind that an N-fed, you've got a transformer, okay, so it's taking the input of your coax into a dead short, effectively, on a multimeter, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Do we bother putting a little ground strap on it or not? I always do. I've never okay. done. Yeah, okay, fine. Uh, debate it, please. I'm having a well, I'll I, I, I tell you what, the reason I do is because I found... That it not only does it uh, reduce the SWR ever so slightly, I mean, it's, there's very little in it, but it does, however, get rid of a lot of the noise off of the antenna um, from personal experience. Um, so it acts a bit more like a like a choke of some description. Um, anyway, I suppose that all of the the uh, the rubbish goes into ground rather than comes along the coax. But are you running that like as a, an actual ground to ground, or are you running that just as a counterpoise? Uh, I'm running as a ground to ground with a counterpoise. There you go, just for added more fun. Okay. Mm. You see, because I've always gone with the philosophy that the braid of the coax is the counterpoise, and therefore, if you if you put a choke of some description uh, close to where the coax is coming into the building, that will stop any RFI getting back into the shack, yeah. uh, but would also mean you don't have to bother with any kind of counterpoise or ground. If you're coming into a building, but if you're in the field, and well, if you're, you're in doing the field, this, yeah, uh, yeah, oh, with a battery, yep. There was a good question. Um, <laughs> this one here, I think it was, and Anon. I think the word is absolutely necessary. I think nothing is absolutely necessary, but anyway, <laughs> can you understand that question? Unbalanced, unbalanced. Yeah. Um, unless you're putting a tune at the onto the wires so if you're using something like uh cg 3000 for instance which is a long fed you know is yeah. a wire antenna tuner then like an sg230 thing sg230 that kind of thing icon we've got one as well the yesu fc40 yeah. uh, unless you're using one of those then yes because your impedance is going to be way off without one yeah, I mean, the end of a piece of wire, half half wavelength piece of wire, the end, the impedance on the end of it, the fed, the end fed part, is anywhere between two thousand six hundred and three thousand six hundred ohms. So oh, it's not it's never going to match the uh, uh, never going to match the antenna uh, feed on the back of your radio without some form of transformer or tuner that knocks it out. It, well, it's also worth noting that many. Um, of those wire tuners won't actually tune a resonant length of wire, bizarrely. Yes, like an SG230. Yeah, one hits, resonant. It hates good 50 ohm antennas. Yeah. yeah. It's going, whoa, I'm not designed for this. <laughs> Cut a bit I'm, off. I'm Make designed it. for something random. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Um, here's one for you, uh, Mike. Uh, Tom is, is just wanting a 56 to 1 to give it a try. How do you wind a fifty-six to one? Uh, it's it's uh, take a coil, uh, take a turn off a of sixty-four, perhaps. Okay. Here's one for you, Mike. The difference between and the, I probably became that just when you were discussing this. The difference between a forty-nine to one and a sixty-four to one, because as I understand it, forty-nine to one works better higher up, and then a sixty-four to one works better lower down. That's yes. what Mike's discovered. Yes, it does. Okay. Um, and the difference between them is literally two turns on the end of the uh, of the of the of the transformer so you've still got the initial two couple turns yeah followed by 14 uh, or followed by 16 so you've got a total of 16 or a total of 14 turns it's the square root thing isn't it yeah seven um, seven to 49 eight eight to 64 or something exactly saying? yeah um okay. and uh, it depends on on the length of the antenna uh, i mean they both work really well i mean and we're nitpicking here the 49 to 1 works really well the 64 to 1 works really well it's just that i've you know having made both and played with both i've i've found that the 64 works just eek. i mean we're talking about 0 0.01 of a you know um swr point um 
better than the 49 on the low bands on 80 and 160 where the uh, uh, the 49 seems to work better. It's obviously to do with the fact that there's less impedance or more impedance on the shorter to longer lengths of wire. Mm. Yeah. Obviously. Okay. Well, okay. So if we miss the fact that you've got a... One of the... When I was first started in this hobby, I had literally no money at all. But I did... Somebody did, did give me a reel of wire. All right. Uh, and I'm not joking, my wired mouse, bro I actually repaired my wired mouse. We were that broke, you know, with babies. Jonathan knows it's like, he's got Rory now, right? Sucking all his money out of the family budget. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, you know, yes. If somebody said, oh, just buy a couple of toroids, you know, I'd have gone online or whatever, or to the RS catalogue, and I'd have thought, yeah, 20 quid, where am I going to get mm. that from? Yeah. So I was, I, I spent a lot of time going down the route of, I had a bit of coax, going out to the backyard, the garden, and what could I do, you know, without any? Which is why, you know, I went down, you know, inverted L's, dipoles, well, we'll get onto loops in a minute, and loading and coils, because there was a bit, a bit of plastic pipe the plumber had left behind, you know. And it was, yep. just, it was just so easy to... And somebody said on that video I did the other day, you know, how do you sell ham radio to people? And he said that... Um, Actually, the people that really like ham, ham radio, it's not the fact that we can talk to Bermuda or Guatemala Bay or whatever. It's the problem problem solving aspect. I think we really like it. And um, and I spent hours, you know, reinventing chapters of books just because I could read it. Didn't mean to say it was real. And I found a few mistakes, you know, because like you do. Yeah. yeah. But I do remember splashing out on a four to one balance for some extortionate amount of money probably from martin lynch and son before it was ml and s a uh, cheap little four to one and i put a little loop around the garden you see but i've done a couple of compact loops as well which i just want to throw into the mix in case anybody's out there because we've got the magnetic loops which are very small but quite complex mike for someone who hasn't got any experience of building antennas yep um, there is a great it. calculator out there that you can use, but I uh, suppose the, the real reality is that you you need to involve variable capacitors and um, you've got uh, Faraday loops and, and then you've got the, the actual loop that drives it in the first place. So it's, yeah, it, it's it's something to, to play with, certainly, but I don't yeah. think it's necessarily the first antenna no, to build. but if you are of a science nature, and you want to know more about magnetic loops and home brewing magnetic loops, go to Mike's channel and surf through some of his videos. He's done some good stuff there. Thank However, you. I'm into what I call wavelength loops. So originally it was a full wavelength, which was, and people are going to ask me the dimensions. I can't remember, but I think for the 40 meter band, my first, my first real antenna looked something like this all the way around. It was probably about 42 meters, I think. It was about 20-ish feet, six metres or so off the deck. I had a four-to-one ballon there, and my coax went back to the shack. And it was it was a lovely little antenna, because I got 40 off that. And then dipoles, not dipole, loaded dipoles, but a straight dipole will resonate again at three times, roughly, three times the, pres the frequency you designed it for. So seven, seven megahertz becomes 21-ish you'll find it's a bit higher probably but anyway whereas a loop will do 40 20 15 and 10 because uh that's seven megahertz two sevens are 14 three sevens are 21 and four sevens are 28 so a, it's a loop would do every every harmonic and i really enjoyed that however nobody told me about the coil thing i did actually manage to get an 80 meter loop in by following roughly the same, I went up or dropped this down probably about two feet or 60 centimetres, and I managed to put an 80 metre loop around the garden and up through the, the loft, the attic actually. And I put a loading coil, because some book somewhere told me uh, to put a loading coil in each corner, because that was actually 60 metres, and I got an, a one to one match with another four to one ballon in the attic with a little loading coil in each corner. And I got dropped that from 60 meters to 80 meters. 
I don't suggest you do that, push that any harder, because a wire loop, get me, don't get me wrong, uh, uh, or correct me, Mike, it won't work efficiently at all at less than half a wavelength. Yeah, roughly. Yeah. Yep. So if I had managed to push this original 40 meter loop down to 80, it probably wouldn't have gone out. Okay. So that's one way of squeezing it in loading coil. Had I ever I mean, done it again, I could have proved it by putting a big fat loading coil probably here and here in the loft and then got that to tune. But yeah, I mean, I'd, there, have there lost is... some, I'd have lost some efficiency, presumably. If stopping you, of course, then, then yeah. taking um, the loop round the 42 metres and then doing it again, but with a little bit of separation between the, uh, the wire. So you've oh, got... Oh, that'd be interesting. Loop. You could do that. Um, ah, okay, so what you're saying is... I wouldn't suggest you do it three or four or five, you know. Uh, what you're saying is you could have done, yeah, basically could have done with two something. With a bit like of separation that. between the two, I, I would suggest that yeah. would, that might work. 60 oh. sams, two feet or so. Yeah. Interesting experiment. Yeah, of course. What, what would that do to the takeoff angle? Because uh, it, it, it was so, so low to the ground compared to the wavelength. Oh, it was envious anyway. It was just it everything was, was going straight up. It would be a near vis, yeah, yeah. It would. Uh, but, yeah, Tim's it would be a great experiment, wouldn't it? If you've got eighty meters of of wire, but oh, only yeah. forty meters of space, <laughs> do it twice. Oh, yeah. What a great idea! I might even do that next weekend. Um, there we are. We and, will and all look out for the works. video, Mike. Yeah, indeed. Why not? <laughs> I might. I might. I might even do that next weekend just to see if it works. And then there was a challenge from earlier on. This fella said, I've got this plot, which is 20 metres by 20 metres, 60-ish feet by 60-ish feet, and I want to put 160 in there. So 160 is a halfway dipole for, for 160 metres. It's 40 metre legs. Yeah. And then you've got all the paracord going everywhere. Don't underestimate how big that is because 160 and that's 40 meters and then you're going to have cord to a tree. This thing becomes gigantic. I reckon but, you could do an N-fed half wave. Ah, Believe it or not, they will, bear with me. Yeah. You could do an N-fed half wave. That would be for 80. But then if you put a loading coil on the end of it of, let's say, around 120, 130 uh, Michael Henry's mm. with another tail, probably a two or three meter tail. Okay. You might bring in the 160 meters. Well, that's what I was thinking because Tom, if he's on the stream, I haven't seen him, but Tom did something. His plot is about that big, and he, I think it was an N fed, and he went all the way around. Um, and I don't know how he got it. I think he got it on 80. But I wondered if what would happen if you linear loaded that and shoved a big coil in the middle. <laughs> I just don't know. Uh -huh. what's, the, what's the distance between there and there? Oh, and now you're talking about Pythagoras. Pythagoras, aren't you? Yeah, but thank us again. I, I'm going to guess about 30 metres. Okay, well, that's not going to work. Ah, uh, what about a big Z? What about a huge Z? 30, 40, 20, 50, 30, 60, 70. A big Z with some loading. Uh, you know, I wonder. Uh, it's a fantastic experiment. I think, on, um, I, think, I think I would go with the uh, the 80 and then put a loading coil on the end of the 80. Yeah. You'll get all the bands in without any, um, without any issues, certainly mm. below 80. Mm. I, I, I would as well because that's essentially what I've got here to get 40. Because it's a twenty meter in fed halfway yeah. with a loading coil to get forty. Yeah. yeah where where is the loading coil, Jonathan? How far down the? Uh, two thirds of the way, and then you've got tail, as Mike said. So I mean, the whole thing's only about. Well, it's a hard. It's essentially it's only about ten meters long, but you've got a bit extra, so probably only about twelve meters long by the time okay. you coil them a bit. You're into forty-eight. Uh, okay. Well, I mean, you could do that here. I mean, there's nothing to stop someone trying. I mean, I mean, I'd definitely try this. I don't know how you might. I mean, I, I might do something like that. 
um, I'll start off with an end fed. I might do a centre fed actually dipole, thinking about it, and come all the way like a halo. Yep. With a break Good here. Dinner. Oh, I haven't. Yeah, I've done that. That would work. Oh, I did that. I did that myself. I've just remembered. <laughs> so my 40 metre little loop in the backyard, back garden here, I used to have little crocodile clips between here and here. Um, that would get me on 80. And then I'd go out to the garden to do a band change, remove the crocodile clips, and I'd be back on 40. So that was that was 40 metres all the way around, wasn't it? For, say 42. Um, and just by cutting this experimentally at the right place for my crocodile clips, I ended up on 80. So I doubled the size. So uh, effectively, the circuit is, yes. is that. The same with that yeah. And it's fed here, isn't it? So that's what we do here. You could easily do that. Funnily enough, I still had my four to one ballon in line. I was getting a fine tune. I don't know why. I don't think. Well, I mean, maybe that's the next discussion. Choke or no choke? That is the question. Um, I must admit, I've never put a one to one or any form of RF choke on any of the diapos I've built or any of the verticals I've built. In fact, apart from um, the end feds, I don't think I've ever put any form of uh, RF choking on. I've, I've done the dirty, what they call a dirty oh, balance, dirty, a dirty balance, choke. Yeah, where you've done the coil on, on um, the coax. Just yeah. to give it a little bit of impedance uh, choking. I always oh, ruined a G5RV by putting a choke on it. Say again, Jonathan. I once ruined a G five RV by putting a choke on it. <laughs> really? Where did yeah. you put the choke at the feed point? Yeah, the feed point. I thought, well, maybe I'll just make it into a doublet. It did not like it. But Which there's nothing clever in the feed point, though, is it? It's just a conversion from the ladder line to. Yeah. So with the with a bog standard G five RV, one side of the ladder line goes to the centre pin, the other side mm. goes to the braid. And what I had forgotten was that the ladder line is part of the antenna. It radiates. So by putting the... Does it? For, yeah. On a G, we'll on come a back to that in a minute. Does it? Uh, it, should, it should do. That's the Does design it? of it on lower frequencies. Mm. Um, so on a, by putting a 4 to 1 at the bottom of it, uh, the ladder line therefore wasn't radiating because it, it wasn't supposed to at that point, and I ruined it. <sighs> Yeah, I, I, I made done. a video uh, once yeah. about how a G5 RV, how the ladder line, the balanced feeder, couldn't radiate. And the, and the reason for the very specific length was the impedance matching. But it wasn't <laughs> until I listened to that video. Yeah. A very clever man. He reinvented the G5 RV with a slide rule and stuff. Um, forgetting his name. Um, he, he, he had a South African call sign. Oh, ZS6. That's it. DP, he DP, made a w. couple of adjustments to uh, Mr. L Louis's calculations and, and came up with a, a kind of a better format for G5 RV. And he said on the full size G5 AV, he was just chatting to a guy. It wasn't a very good interview, but he did say that, um, that the ladder line radiated, but only on 20. No. I just can't see how it does. I, it, it doesn't, all right? The ladder line can't radiate because it's a balanced line, all right? You've got, you've got the, um, the center on one side and, the, if you like, the shield on the other. I mean, you know, call it what you will. Um, and as you're transmitting, they are exactly the same distance apart, doing exactly the opposite stuff than what they would. That's the whole point of, of um, ladder line or balance feeder is that it doesn't radiate. All it is is a transformer. It's used as an impedance transformer between. It is the, the it's top definitely of, used for that. I can't see and, how it and, radiates, but you know, it, it can't. It's physic physically. And I'm going to get in trouble for this, but it physically can't radiate because you've got two opposite things happening. You know, you're getting this cancellation going up the ladder line. That's the whole point of ladder line. 
So how can it radiate? Uh, G0FVT, we'll I'm forgetting his oh. first name, is saying it would radiate if it had asymmetry. But if it was symmet if it had symmetry, what you're saying, Mike, is it can't radiate. Well, you get you get opposite um, uh, effects, don't you, on each side of the ladder line, which is what yeah. cancels out, which is why we use ladder line um, in the first place as as a transmission line because it's it cancels out the RF. It's that whole equal and opposite reaction thing. Yeah, yeah. Please, someone if someone knows better and can prove better, then then yeah. I'd, I'd submit. But ladder line is, is that's the whole point behind it. That's why we use it is the fact that it cancels out. Oh, Frankenstein's monster. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's good fun. I think we should, we'll carry on live for a little bit, but I think uh, we will kind of wrap up. So if you're watching this on replay, I thoroughly recommend you stop now and go and watch something more interesting. Yes. Because we're just going to talk bollocks now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my done an hour. You. Done an hour. <laughs> Have we really? My God, yeah. you have. Hasn't it flown? Cool. And here we are. Here we are. So it does radio because people feed them from a unbalanced line. Okay, explain that. I know mm. it's unbalanced line. Yeah. No, it's only Is that why Jonathan stopped working? Because he put a choke in it. What would that? We don't it? want the coax to radiate, though, do we? No. Uh, yeah, I don't get it. No, I, 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 I it was, it's trouble with me because when I mean, the feed point of G5RV should be fairly close to 50 ohms, that's why you can feed it with Carmax. And that's why it's a very specific length. And that's why it's a very James specific James taught me that. We, we, he got this antenna and he kept cutting the, dub, the 450 line and measuring it, you know, and we could see the. Uh, we could see how the impedance was changing. But I don't know how to read a Smith chart, but so it's it all that. So it must have been that by putting a 4 to 1 ballon at the feed point, the ladder line therefore wasn't acting therefore as, as a, or I just completely, the impedance was completely wrong um, at the feed point. It's completely wrong at the feed point, correct. And then and the, that's why it wouldn't then work. And then the transformer is your balance feeder. Yeah. Because so, oh, as you as you chop it at various points along that balance feeder, you can get all different impedances. Yes. So a one to one would have worked quite nicely. Ah, uh, yeah. probably yes. Yeah. Physics, isn't it? Is anybody any questions? Uh, please, not a serious one. <laughs> Yeah, it's gone past that now, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> and I've run out of milk with gin. <laughs> that's, a, that's a strange combination, Callum. To be fair, it looked yeah. more like oh, can you imagine? to me anyway. So, yeah, uh, it, did. it comes out, actually, with the lighting around here, it comes out slightly yellow. <laughs> definitely pasties. Uh, yeah. uh, banana milk. Uh, Wendy's yeah. upstairs with COVID. Oh, is she? Is she okay? Uh, uh, inverted U. Yeah, that's just the same, Martin. Exactly the same. It's inverted U V. Just make it a different, different thing. I mean, just to, to clarify, you've got two trees here and here, and it's a shitty tree. I'm sorry, but anyway, and you want to, you know, whatever. And you've got a bit of wine here. Oh, I know what I can do. I can go along here and along there, but it's not long enough, so I'll come down. That's fine. That'll work too. And there's your coax from the middle. Use some decent wire I, here I because think that will stretch like hell. That's not a U, is it? That's well, a gold move. Yeah, okay. It, I suppose Turn it, it upside down, it would be a U. <laughs> That's right, it's inverted U. Is That's that it. Yeah, okay. It inverted. worked. He did say inverted U. Does a shitty tree generate shitty sticks? <laughs> I, don't, I, I, that was... <laughs> I, don't, I don't want to touch it to find out. <laughs> okay, so here's one. Don't eat here's the fruit. One. Do, okay, votes, please, if you want me to try this. Plenty of trees at Holly Farm, okay? Plenty of trees. Uh, what I want to know is if I put a ton of radials here. That's a broccoli tree, that one. Did you know? Bro yeah. All right. Get my coax, put a stainless bolt at the bottom of the tree, and fire 1,000 watts at it with my big tuner. Will the tree radiate? 
you're you're going to have to get your chainsaw to SWR that though. Aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> I've just got about oh. four to one ballon actually thinking about it, and I'll it just would... squirt more. Actually, it's probably just kill the blooming tree, wouldn't it? <laughs> oh, is there, is there a moderator oh. around that can get rid of these blooming? Oh, we've got one of them, have we? Lovely. Block user. It's blocking. I've done it actually. Um, yeah. You'll surely piss off the squirrels. Um, <laughs> well, it would do, wouldn't it? Yeah. Do you know, surely with that, and in all seriousness, it would depend on how recently it rained. Hazelnut popcorn. Uh, or how much resin is in the tree. So in the yeah. spring, all the resin's coming. So it would work probably better in the spring. Yeah. But, of course, the tree's growing, so, you know, your, your length of the antenna's going to get longer. Yeah, which is why I'd need a tuner. <laughs> so if you... May, this is an interesting experiment, though. How long would it take for your 20-metre tree to turn into a 40-metre tree? <laughs> wow. Wow. Yeah. It, depends, it depends on the balanced tuner. Oh. I once did an interesting um, experiment. What about uh, 160 metres? At my old place, it was nowhere near... The guard was nowhere near long enough for, for top band. So I managed to sort of borrow some space from the neighbour. Uh, as well to do essentially i had a dipole but where one element the hot one if you want was at height and the uh cold ran down to the ground and then ran along the ground and that worked quite nicely hmm. so that was vertical. Great. <laughs> no it was, no it was it was horizontal so it was a dipole where the the sort of the, 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 the hot part if you want was was at height about i don't know 10 15 meters above the ground but, and the, the shield the yeah. coax, ran down to the ground and then just parallel uh, okay. with it. Yeah, yeah, fine. I think that would work. Yeah, well, yeah. That's, um, that's uh, an inverted C, or maybe not even inverted. <laughs> no, it's just a C. <laughs> the, it the is absolute... just C for Callum. Uh, the absolute <laughs> Do you know what we haven't edited? done tonight? We haven't done radials. Uh, I said we do radials. Or mag loops. Or... Uh, Radials, just put some down, right? Or ground planes. The minimum, or... I would say, uh, use, if it's for 40 metres, the minimum I'd use is about 40 metres of wire, and I, doesn't, I don't care how long they are. I mean, don't have a million a quarter of an inch long, right? That's not going to work, is it? They need, I think, to be yeah, a couple of three metres. The minimum I use is about three metres, and even on 80 metres, that is. Three and I'd a half metres. Three metres is good. Because then you've got a six meter spread, which yeah, is, which is yeah. pretty cool. Yeah, and it's easy to handle. And if you have bunches and bunches of four, if you've got like fork connectors or something, um, you'll find it. It's a lot easier. If four, you can sort of pull four out easy and just drop them. A six, I find more difficult. Uh, so, uh, bit of trivia question. for you. Bit of trivia, bamboo. Bamboo are horizontal trees. Oh, yeah. They go straight up. You can see them, but the roots grow sideways. Or oh, ground plane, aren't they? The ground plane. Uh, yeah, yeah I know. Just feed them with copper. Doesn't copper sulfate kill most greenery? It don't kill Leandi. Oh, doesn't it? No, no, no nothing kills that. No, I've tried. Nothing kills oh, shit, that. really? Leandi. Right. Here's, here's a question for you both. What's the stupidest antenna you've ever used and had a contact on? Huh. Step ladders. Excellent. Mine was a barbed wire fence. I haven't Mine done was that yet. not actually putting the aerial on the mount whilst driving up the motorway. That was that was that's pretty impressive. Yeah, he did. I remember he did that. I'm going to find that. That's still on Odyssey, I think. Odyssey. I travelled from my home all the way to my place of work, some with no some antenna, fifty odd miles, um, fifty watts. Um, on my it wasn't it was on my Yesu, it wasn't my Kenwood, on my Yesu, um opening the Gloucester repeater, <laughs> completely quietening. In all in all fairness, good old, a, good old RG fifty eight. <laughs> but Mike, in all fairness, I I've done your commute basically coming back from Cleveland. Yeah, you have. That does not surprise yeah. me at all. Hello, Lockie. Uh, he's just waved, doesn't he? Uh, he's going to the beer fridge. No, I can't uh, find yeah, it. yeah, you have done my commute, haven't you? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That does not surprise me for that repeater. It's a good repeater. Mm. Are you talking about the Gloucester or the um, yeah. 
Gloucester, yeah. and yeah. and um, uh, Victor Mike, which is also yeah, it's fantastic, good, yeah, good repeater. Um, Aidis used a twelve-inch patch lead. <laughs> Rowley used a six-inch nail on ten meters. Um, so LA three Henning made an antenna out of tin foil about three meters long, fed with two meters of wire. Worked Brazil on forty meters. All TVs in the neighbourhood went blue. Fantastic! <laughs> uh, love it. Actually, um, there's, there's, a, there's an. Toby idea. did what you've done. He connected the antenna to the wrong port and made a made a contact on the two three nine. I got a dummy load off Martin Lynch and Son. They couldn't be bothered to bill me. They said, "Oh, just give us a plug when you do the experiment." And I, I bought ten meters of RG fifty eight from Peter. Right, <laughs> I promise I have. I've already put a PL two five nine on one end. Uh, I've just got to do it on the other end. I'm going to plug into the dummy load. I'm going to just put it up the tree and see if we how many contacts we can get no, on you'll RG58. Get, you'll get the X on that, mate. There's no problems at all there. <laughs> I'll tell you what I've got, I want to do, um, and I will do in the near future, is buy some copper tape. Oh, Ooh, yeah. I've done, I've done something with copper and tape. And cut a before. slot in it. Oh. A slot antenna create a slot antenna on copper with copper tape for two and 70 just to see my, my experience with copper tape um was i bought some and then b before callum started doing the dx commander i bought a very cheap fishing pole and ran the copper tape up the side of the fishing pole but managed to fold it over so that i could extend it and then the copper would make great idea and that Ooh. worked quite nicely wow Great idea. So you didn't run it all up the outside, so if it bent, it would snap. You no, I, I ran each it, section. You folded it, folded over, it over, so it would. If you so as long we, as you lined it up, it would it would make. Yeah. Brilliant idea. Someone oh, needs to try a tape measure vertical. I tell you what, we need to do, Mike. Seriously, is soak some string in salt water, <laughs> crystalline it. Do that one. <laughs> and the other thing I was thinking, if you get a really nice little water pump. With a really nice jet um, that kind of recycled itself, you could just blow water up, you know, about two and a half meters. I think as you find it breaks up into bubbles, salt, heavy salt water, not heavy water that's salted, but just, you know, quite a lot of salt, and see if we could use that as a vertical. I think you'll find the SWRB all over the place because sometimes the jet would come up and it would, that would fall apart, wouldn't it? It'd have to be quite yeah. accurate. Right. I'm oh, going to volunteer to you to use your radio, though, for the uh, for the testing. As, please use my Acom 2000. <laughs> well, we could, Andy Cowley we says could something works. We could boil the water into resonance. <laughs> I want to know no, what I'm, works. I'm, I'm I want to know what works, Andy. I'm thinking that if you use uh, a hose pipe with laminar flow, where you don't get quite the disturbance in the water, that would actually you'd get fairly constant. It would. You could make a loop. God, we'll be, putting, we'll be putting copper into waterfalls next and see if we can make them work, won't we? Yeah. <laughs> so there was an article, a water fountain antenna. You can adjust the frequency based on the pressure. I know. I think it'd be funny. Salt water in a hose <laughs> yeah, pipe. It'd be a wet IR. <laughs> <laughs> so Andy says he's genuinely done the string and salt water. So... Oh, fair play to the man. Yeah, I think, I don't no, know. I think, I think, I think uh, you've got to be fairly quick with how, you know, with, with doing that experiment because it's going to dry out. Even yeah. on a fairly wet day, it's going to dry First out. First key. Yeah. <laughs> I know, yeah. <laughs> you can't even cheat by putting a piece of copper up here. <laughs> no. Yeah. So, anyway, I want to do slot antennas. I think that's a great experiment where you can actually just get a panel, any size panel, and just... Mm. just Put a slot in it, and then you can put your positive and negatives, if you like, your coax center hot feed and the you and the, yeah and you discussed slot and make it work. That'd be great fun. You, you discussed that with me actually a while ago. These uh, slot antennas. Hmm. Um. Need to know what I think you need to. Um, I got to do it. I've been promising myself that I'm going to do it, so I'm going to do. It. It's the same principle used on fuselages of aircraft for their antennas. So why not? Is that right? Yeah. How does a how does a, a an aircraft work then? 
That's a yeah. big engine. Yeah, a big engine. <laughs> what you've got is a funny looking elliptical shape of so the So do they the use the fuselage as the <laughs> antenna? Is that what you're saying? Yes. Parts of the of the fuselage, obviously not. <laughs> well, that'd be funny. No, what's that? I'm not reading. No, don't worry. Uh, so yeah, I've clicked the wrong one. I've clicked the wrong one. Yeah. So uh, would putting a sprinkler by your radio field help your antenna if you make your radio field wet? Well, interestingly, possibly yes. Yes. I had a change in SWR when the tide came in in Bude years ago, but that's only because I worked out that um, the grass got wetter with the with the waves and the spray. So yeah, the milli semen value goes up. Doesn't yeah, milli semen. It? I mean, you could get rock salt and cover it all over your backyard, right? Peel <laughs> everything off. That's if you right? don't mind not having any <laughs> grass left, <laughs> or plants, or <laughs> snails, some, or buy some seaweed. <laughs> the worms go ah. But <laughs> <laughs> I want to know. Uh, uh, I watched a video of a guy who did it. I want to know what what he watched because we've covered a few things. Um, so Smokey, I think I can't remember his real name. I always call him Smokey because that's what his call sign looks. He refuses to get a full call sign because he's two M zero K I E. It's so good, and his old CB handle, unbelievably, was Smokey. How about that? Brilliant. Do you think a halfway vertical for one sixty strapped to my drone would work? Yeah, blooming right, it would. You need pretty lightweight wire, though, wouldn't you, Mike? Oh yeah. And some very lightweight doingy doingy, so you can keep a bit of pressure on it. Yep. Is that, I, I've, and that when I the... first moved into this um, house, when I first started playing radio, not being 100% sure how the neighbours would take um, the antenna farm I now have uh, in the back <laughs> garden, um, I actually put some um, very thin wire inside my gutter and down my drain pipe as, um, as a stealth type of antenna. Yeah. It worked perfectly. Until I keyed up and wiped out every single television. <laughs> Part I from originally it. put my RG58 in the gutter, which was full of water, and yeah. I keyed up, and I watched the SWR meter going. <laughs> and then I would drop the key. And, and all the steam and, coming out of the gutter. Yeah, yeah just like, like 30 watts or something. I go again every time I keyed it up. Because the, the RG58 was so badly screened... I mean, you know, it's like one turn of foot, isn't it? I wouldn't say it's that good. Um, okay. Uh, kite aerials, something you wants to try. Uh, yes. That would actually be really cool. To be I, frank, kind of, I, think. I speak to a guy um, on regularly on in the morning on my commute um, who actually flies kites um, and has his aerial strung below um, from his kite. And, uh, yeah, get some amazing results. Um, you do have to be careful with antennas, though. That's the problem. You have Why, to be careful with antennas because um, of static buildup. Because you you have to have uh, some yeah. kind of lightning arrester because you do get, even on a not particularly electrically stormy day, you do get quite a bit of static charge buildup on, on your wire. Mm. Mm. Okay, but so, they do work quite nicely. On my 12.4 vertical... Uh, we've got the driven plate here, and then we've got a ground plate with an SO239. Should I be putting a very, very high impedance coil into the uh, ground? That, that's the next thing that we need to play with, isn't it? We need to do some discharge coils or some um, static discharge coils on the bottom. Mm. It's so so high. It's a DC path, but it's so high impedance, it, it, it would just be ignored by everything other than... Some weird frequency which we don't know about. Well, we I've certainly seen um, some some high Henry coils being made for that particular job, and I think uh, I you one. can use a, a I don't know a three K or a four K uh, resistor, um, you know, uh, for the same type of job as uh, well. Okay, all right, thousand K, I should say, three thousand K, something like that, but um, of of relatively high wattage. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's 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 a plan. Let's play. Let's do that. Let's let's see if mm. we can build something. Mm. 
see if it actually helps or reduces because it it can only reduce static noise so that might actually reduce the line noise off of a off of a vertical if it's if it's indeed present i don't have any problem with mine to be honest so now the other eye at what height jonathan do you think people really need to start looking at bleed resistors coils and stuff for static i don't know but i think if you're certainly because most most people try and run a kite antenna because they wanted to put a vertical up for the lower bands so i suppose if you've got a bit of you know a bit of wire up in the air for 40 meters say or, or even 80 then you need to start th thinking about it but um um but i would be interested to see on let's say a nebula where you've got 80 meters of wire hanging around in the air mm. what difference a bleed resistor would make on your received noise hmm. good one experiment i see coming on there Somewhere between 5 and 15 mega ohms to discharge bleed the DC build-up, says Stephen. Mike, what do you think? Yeah, yeah, that's, um, I, I, I'd agree. I would agree. Mm. What do they look like? Big, chunky things. Oh, I, I could search it. Um, uh, what do you call it? Uh, a square with lots of fins on it for the heat, because um, normally they're inside of, of amps and things, so... Uh, some really yeah, big okay. jobbies. And if you wanted to put one of them in a little box and encapsulate it with goop, what sort of goop would you use for the encapsulation? <laughs> no, to make sure the harmonicalization still works. Yeah, probably some <laughs> some um, some SWR grease, I think, would probably be the best thing SWR to use. SWR grease. By the way, guys, you, I've got to make you laugh now. I have I haven't contacted this cosmetics company yet, but morning, Roly. Um, there is a cosmetic company. I'm about to ask if they can. I'll just get rid of Roly's message. Hello, Roly. Um, they can, a little tin, little little tiny jar, right? So I want of petroleum jelly, and it'd be the official DX Commander SWR grease. I was going to put it in with every order. <laughs> At least it'll keep their hands off when they're building an antenna. Yeah, and waterproof. And, 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 yeah, it will stop the water getting into the SO239 connector. Yes. I actually do use um, Mr. Monsieur Vaseline for that. Other petroleum-based jellies are available. Um, but I actually do use um, that particular manufacturer's Vaseline um, to uh, to do my SO239s and uh, PO239s I've... on the bottom of the antenna. So Just when... use it on the thread. I don't stop. Yeah. Putting it in it the body and just a tiny bit on the thread. And that's when I would, my antenna's been up over a year now. I haven't had any. When I run it. HF mobile, uh, I used petroleum Washing jelly off. on the on my uh, braid connection because I needed to run a, a still small bonding strap onto the uh, uh, the chassis of the car, and that would always get corroded. So I ran some petroleum, petroleum jelly on it and worked perfectly. Okay. Uh, right, I believe. What's this? Uh, lightning static. Okay, Alpha Delta centers. Oh, yeah, they do. Yeah, they do. They're not cheap, though. Um, one thing I want to see you do, Catlin. Okay. Talk about top band not so long ago. Yeah. Like you do with the uh, the eighty meters on the twelve point five. Yeah. Do a coil for the nebula. Yeah. I think we should. I think that'd be a bit of fun. Because I don't. I mean, it's it's I don't dead see... easy. It's it's going to be instead of a quarter wave, it's going to be about an eighth of a wave. I mean, it, it tune up absolutely fine. Yeah. I don't know about multi banding it. That might be a bit of a problem. But good, but good for a mono band, top band. A band, mono band. Yeah, I know. I mean, I know uh, like Spider Beam, for instance, he sells a little contraption for the top of his eighty meter pole with these capacitors. No, oh, so got yeah. capacity hat. Capacity hat, yeah. but I mean, to be honest, it looks blooming complicated. I mean, a lot of wire and everything. Where a coil two thirds of the way up, surely there's not going to be much difference in Q and efficiency. Um, I think Ooh, you... angle of radiation would it have an impact? I don't know. Mike's the clever one here. Oh, I might just go, yeah. Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm thinking about the best place. To, I see. I'd sent a sent a load that I think. Would you? Yeah. Right here. 
somewhere yeah. where you've basically where you've done it just mm. just just above the center point just I to think. i would play there see turns. what you get mm -hmm. personally but hey you know it's also base load well i think we need to try that and i think what we need to do is um i happen to have about oh, it's about a foot long 30 centimeters I just randomly, I was bored one day and I had this huge reel of copper, enameled copper wire and I had all these turns, right, on this thing with little flying leads. I might uh, put a copper stake in the ground and connect it up to the uh, driven plate. And how do I measure what's going on here? I assume I can't. I tell you what would be really cool to do is to put an ammeter here that would be fun to see if there's much current literally being drawn into the ground as the huge dark clouds come over right <laughs> and all the lightning going on <laughs> because i know someone did this and um because after i was hit by lightning not myself i don't try to look like this but the house was here uh, after that lightning, I got, there was a Yahoo group or a groups.io uh, where professional lightning arrester folks hang out and architects and stuff. I didn't, I didn't say anything because it was, they were all, it was all a bit above me. But one guy said that they put an ammeter, you know, there's this big, you know, copper strip down the side of the building and they've got these little spikes, you know, sitting on the top of the building to attract static and everything else and they were measuring four amps dissipating into the ground dc that's oh, a whole never world isn't it that's that's the test four amps um... constantly and the idea being is that that four amps all the time is sort of protecting the building so there's not this huge static build up so all of a sudden the lightning decides to so and what i was trying to understand was that the lightning protection it looks like they actually they're trying to attract the lightning. But actually, what it's doing is just keeping the potential between the ground and that few hundred feet around it down to acceptable levels. So the lightning doesn't even happen in the first place. Yeah, makes sense, Jonathan. It, yeah, makes perfect sense. I, I'm surprised it was as high as four amps, but yeah, that's that's brilliant. I forgot what it's called, but Tesla invented it or discovered it. I should say. Yeah, yeah. I like I like the business about discovered uh, the, the difference between invent and discover. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, because it's a it's a thing of nature, so you you can't invent something that comes from mm. science or nature. It's it's it's, it's discovered, isn't it? Mm. Yeah. Try, I'll go out with Marconi. You reckon Marconi? I reckon it was Tesla. But hey, let's no, do no, a no, set. No. No, no, is it, no. I argue, argue the fact that Mark only didn't invent radio. Oh, I see. Because you know, well, he didn't. Yeah. He bought the patents, didn't he? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he was the clever. He put it all in a little box and didn't show anybody what was inside it. There's a fantastic story <laughs> of Mark only doing a demonstration at the Royal Society in London. In London, and, on the roof, wasn't it? Yes, yeah, so he was in the roof, and he was supposed to be um, receiving this message from somewhere down in Cornwall, probably the Lizard, actually. And um, saying, you know, this is like a, a very private, uh, secure line. And all he invented was being able to change the frequency. Um, and <laughs> another bloke up the road, literally up the road, started just tra transmitting in Morse. And I can't remember the exact phrase, but it basically it was boiled down to Marconi as a fool um, that came out of the speaker inside the Royal Society while That's... Marconi was doing this talk. First ever intentional QRM. Basically, yes. <laughs> And he's still around today. Tim and I still get the man. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> he's just moved. <laughs> Any videos, Andy, on, on the 9.5 signature? Uh, no videos yet. Uh, we got the product. I'm just testing it now. So you just wait another couple of weeks. Um, battery says we could capture that four amps and charge up the batteries. Oh. Mm, we'd need a controller because I don't know what voltage that is. What voltage would it be? Very little, I would have thought. Uh, okay. Very low voltage and high current. 
micro micro uh, volts i would have thought yeah. it still give you a jolt if you touched it i know i can measure how many volts comes off my local tv transmitter just for oh, i really? throw that one into the mix what off your antenna yeah i can point the uh the uh, tv antenna the yagi at the uh the transmission tower and uh, i can measure volts are you the, are you the man who who managed to run his central heating uh, off off the, the HV lines? No, 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 not off the HV. But there's there's a story, and I've no idea whether it's true or not. So um, if it isn't, do take it with a pinch of salt. But I've heard the story where a man managed to power his central heating by pointing a yagi at his local radio transmitter, the you know, BBC radio transmitter, uh, got enough volts on it in order to power his central heating. Because it's electric. <laughs> Must have lived in Droitwich. Well, exactly. It could have well be. <laughs> 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 it's not true. Fair enough. Okay, well, I had a trip round. You've climbed up. You went halfway up one of the bloody towers, didn't you, Mike? Yes, I did, yeah. yeah, yeah. So many, many, many years ago. Goodness that's right. Us. We'll yeah. find a picture of those. But um, Droit, which It's very scary. Towers. I believe they're 800 feet high aren't they i don't know i never got to the top yeah that's it uh, uh it's it's quite big it's quite big it doesn't look 800 feet but the little towers off to the side here i think are 300 feet so that's yeah, kind of, are, yeah. yeah and uh but i they had a tour lift, around the broad... now. <laughs> <laughs> lift. i had a tour around the broadcast you know the where all the amplifiers are and everything well, houses, the size of houses, aren't they? And then we walk up the, you know, to the path, and the little engineer is showing us, and he's he's going, if you just shut that gate, oh, just shut it, like, oh, 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 there it is, there it is. And sure enough, we could hear Radio Four on the gate. <laughs> right. <laughs> Honestly, I heard Radio Four at 198 kilohertz, 400 kilowatts. Yeah. I was walking around that thing. Why am I? It's still normal. <laughs> well, but that's a debatable <laughs> statement, isn't it, that one? <laughs> but um, they had a team of engineers for years working with the locals around there because there'd be ladies, you know, phoning up the BBC going, oh, my God, I, 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 I can hear um, um, the weather coming out of my kettle, <laughs> stuff like that. <laughs> There really was a lady, she could hear the radio out of a kettle. She was so close. Yeah. 400 kilowatts. Kilowatts. Yeah, 400,000 watts at 1,500 metres band. Lovely. Uh, interesting enough, that is um, wide-banded. Uh, this, this, this is a T, isn't it, off the top? Yes, it is. There's a T. And, um, and how it works is um, you've got four feeders coming up and then four lines across the top and they're all connected to different ones because the bandwidth, I can't remember, what is AM? Is it six kilohertz wide or 12 kilohertz wide on the broadcast? Nine. Nine kilohertz. Nine, yeah. Nine. Anyway, if you take 198 kilohertz and then put the bandwidth in, right, the difference between there and there, I can't remember, it's about 40 metres or something. So if you take your nine kilohertz signal and try and squeeze it into your dipole, <laughs> the SWR doesn't quite fit in. So they had to wide band it, which is why they put all these different wires up and everything to attempt to get it to 198 kilohertz, along with a massive great tuner the size of a small house. It is big. It is huge. And then what they've done, cleverly, they have... Um, uh, one of these is shunt-fed BBC Radio 5 Live, and then the other tower is another medium wave. I think it was Radio 2 on the medium wave, and then you've got 198 kilohertz coming right off the top. Oh, it's quite remarkable. Big towers, though. They're just 
well, I, sometimes I just test my radio by going to 198 kilohertz and I'll, I'll just know if I've got my antenna connected because it's either S9 when there's no antenna connected <laughs> or 60 over if there is any antenna, doesn't matter what it is. Yeah. I, I was surprised with how deaf the 7300 is down at 198 kilohertz. Oh, really? Uh, it's, yeah. not, it's not deaf. deaf. It's not deaf, honestly, Jonathan. It's attenuated. Well, okay. So there's a weird spurious thing that happens at around 800 kilohertz on my 7300. I don't know whether it's all of them. But I get a weird signal that when I tune to it, it disappears. Um, and I had side by side a 590SG and my 7300. And on 198 kilohertz, on these 590, it, uh, Radio 4 was 10, 10 over Booming. Nine. On the 7300, it was S1. Yeah. If that. Funny you should say that because I have got quite the same thing, but if I'm um, just slightly out the band, above the band, if you like, on the 890, um, I can see the, the waterfall is incredibly strong for uh, Radio 4. And as soon as I come down into the band, it some attenuation automatically kicks in in the back of the radio, and the scope goes almost blank. Mm. I just so find I, it interesting. I think it's something that's built into the machines to yeah, stop, the, stop the stop the AM from destroying the front end because it's a very powerful signal. Could be wrong. Mm. Could be know. wrong. Don't know. Anyway, chaps, I'm going to have to call it quits because I've got to get up at some silly o'clock in the morning and go to work. I'm just going to paste a link for this guy who wants to know more about my drums. Um, it's, uh, there's only one video on that channel I've just posted. Um, but we will be, little plug for my band, we're going to start live streaming our rehearsals soon. It's shit, okay? It's utter <laughs> shit, right? Well, that's a great name for the band. <laughs> Please welcome. Utter shit. If you've got an hour, just you know what the hell's Callum doing now, right? And you want to heckle us on a live chat? You can just see George Holland saying that, can't you? <laughs> I'll probably, I'll probably have my iPad down there so I can reply to the live live chat. But anyway, that's what we'll be doing. What we might do is I'll stream only to a select few, probably like to the on the Discord channel. Only the Discord. So if you're on Discord, you might get the notification. I'll keep it private for the rest of the time. So we, whether you subscribe or not, you might not get the rehearsals yet until they're bad enough. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I think we say 73. Which is... Uh, that was a number above 72. It's, yeah. And if you're feeling really good, I'll give you a 74. How about that? Oh, cracky. Cracking stream, lad, wow. says Martin. It has been quite good fun, actually. I got One a question. half hours of total baloney. Quick question before I go. 73 yeah. is, is um, what, well, ta-ta, isn't it, basically? Have a nice yeah. day. Best, yeah. best wishes. Yeah. yeah best wishes. What's 88? Uh, hugs and kisses or something, I don't know. Okay. It's what the ladies say. Okay, yeah. got you. Or what I'm you might say to a lady. Yeah. I, I like the fact that 73 is a palindrome in binary. For what? It's a palindrome, so... Oh, it's, it's, it's genuinely a palindrome. It's okay, genuinely for... a palindrome in binary. Oh. Isn't that one of those cakes you get at Christmas? Uh, yes. Yeah. Yes, Little it is. Fine. So sometimes it's just easier to agree. Um, Norm, Great being dyslexic. <laughs> Norm says 99. Now, in the UK, a 99 is a cone with ice cream a and a little Cadbury's flake, and that's a 99. So. That's a 99. And they never cost 99p. No, 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 that's right. So, in fact, next Friday's live stream, I think you've got to, I think as a challenge, right, I want to give 99 out at least once. So have a listen to that. That's cool. <sighs> kind regards, says Smokey. With or without sprinkles? <laughs> no, uh, Ron Reckon's 88 are side cutters from British Telecom. Oh. And there we are. Uh, no, I the, the copied the guitars are copies, they're not uh, they're not real. I mean, they I mean, play, they play, yeah, they play and they're very nice copies, but they're, but they're not, you know, 
not well. 69 and 73, he says. Uh, right, before it gets any worse, I'm going to hit the end <laughs> button. 73, everybody, all the best. Good night. See you in the week. Bye for now. Bye-bye.